All right, so today I want to talk about some grip, but I'm going to cover it from a little bit different angle than you might be thinking. If you've been doing kettlebell swings for a short period of time or a long period of time, especially if you're doing heavy swings, and particularly if you're doing single arm swings, it's pretty obvious that grip is really, really important. What you may not realize is that grip is actually incredibly important for the Turkish getup as well. So I want to talk about three exercises that address an aspect or an attribute of grip that's really important in the Turkish getup, but not the one that you might be thinking. If you're doing a Turkish getup, we know that we got to keep a nice, tight, straight wrist. And so this is the obvious one. If I'm holding the bell like this, I turn mine off to the side, that's a topic for a different time. I want to keep my wrist nice and straight. Now, if you've got a 20 um, kilo bell, that's not really all that hard. If you have a, a 40 or a 48 or whatever bell, this starts pulling your wrist into extension. That's obvious. You need good wrist flexion strength to be able to resist that. But what I want to talk about today is actually uh, pronation and supination and a little bit of we're going to add in ulnar and radial deviation. So before I get into it, let's just talk about what those motions are. Pronation is when you're sort of taking your thumb and turning it over this way. Supination is when you turn it over to the opposite way. So when you're turning your palm up like you're holding cups of soup. Ulnar deviation and radial deviation they happen to happen, what's called in the coronal or the transverse plane. And ulnar deviation is when you're turning your hand you know, on the inside of your arm. And radial deviation is when you're turning it to the outside of the arm. These are very essential aspects of a really, really good stable grip or a really, really good stable wrist that oftentimes aren't addressed. Now, the other thing I want to cover before I actually get into the exercises is why do we need this in the Turkish getup? Well, it has to do with controlling the bell. And where we have the most trouble with this in terms of rotation is going to be when you're going, you know, on this up sweep and the down sweep. The down sweep being much, much more challenging because the bell is going to move and start to twist a little bit. And it's important that you have a really, really good transverse and coronal plane control of the wrist and the forearm so that you can manage the position of the bell. If you don't have good you know, control or strength of your pronation or supination and ulnar and radial deviation, a lot of times when you're doing the, the sweep, particularly the down sweep, the bell will spin and the momentum of the bell, especially if it's really heavy, will sort of spin out of control and that's when you, the, the bell falls out of, or moves out of position and then that's when you start losing the bell, which of course is a, a really dangerous thing that we don't want to have. So if we're doing the Turkish getup, where we sort of typically lose these guys, if we're here and we're going to do the get up and I sort of, I get my punch up and I'm doing my short lever sweep here, this motion right here, the bell, you can see it kind of turns a little bit. Okay. And same thing. If we're coming back down, when I come out like this, I have to turn in order to get my sweep underneath me. That turning motion when the bell is heavy, will create a lot of rotation there, right? It's pulling you into pronation, which means you need strong supinators to be able to hold that position and manage the momentum of the bell, okay? So that's where we're oftentimes losing the bell is in that down sweep. When you go and you start to, you have to rotate a little bit and the bell starts to gain momentum spinning around your arm. If you don't have really good supination and pronation strength and also radial and ulnar deviation, it's oftentimes difficult to control that and you lose the bell, not because you've lost balance, but because the momentum of the bell sort of pulls the bell out of position. So there's a couple exercises that I want to show you. Some involve equipment that you may or may not have, others involve or the other one involves equipment that you do have if you're doing kettlebell swings. So the first couple I want to talk about, we're going to use these clubs. Now these clubs, you know, this is a five pound club. There's a 10, there's a 15. Um, I don't know if anything more heavier than the 10 for what we're going to do and most things, you know, if you're doing you know, your, your shoulder swings or whatever, I don't know if you need anything much more than a 10. But the drill that I want to cover here, the first one, is going to just be club, 
pronation and supination. And there's really three versions of this. You're going to hold the club, and you can hold it the farther towards the middle it is, the easier it is, the less resistance. The farther towards the end of the club, the more resistance. So even if you only have a 10-pound club, excuse me, a 5-pound club, you can actually manage the actual, I guess, technically torque by changing the position of the hand, okay? So if we're here just like this, the drill's pretty easy. If we wanna work on our pronation, we're gonna let the club pull us into supination, and then we're gonna bring the club back up to pronate, back up to neutral, right? So it's eccentric activation of the pronators. I know it's weird because it's pulling me into supination. And then I'm going to go from a fully supinated position to sort of a neutral position here, okay? That's gonna be working my pronators. You can do that as an individual exercise just by itself. Just like this, bringing it back up. We can now do the same, but in the direction of pronation. So now I'm letting the bell, or excuse me, the, the club pull me into pronation, which is gonna make my supinators eccentrically activate, and then I'm going to concentrically activate my supinators back to neutral. Either one of those can be done as an exercise. You can either let it go into supination or you can let it go into pronation. I prefer those to strengthen like those individually. But if you're short on time or you want just a little bit of a change, you can kind of alternate back and forth. You know, where you're coming all the way over like this, all the way over like that, just kind of a catch-all for your pronation and your supination. So that's with a club. That's a really, really good exercise. Another good one that you can do with the club is gonna be ulnar and radial deviation. Again, these don't sound like super important things because most of the time when people are doing grip work, they're doing crushing grip. We don't spend a lot of time, unfortunately, doing pinch grip where we can work the smaller muscles of the hand. And we definitely aren't doing a lot of ulnar and radial deviation. The only place I really see people doing that is in baseball because they need a lot of wrist control and wrist, wrist power. You need it though if you're doing heavy Turkish get-ups. So this is another really, really good one. Again, you can just kind of grab the bell here, and now we're gonna let the bell pull me into ulnar deviation, so I'm activating my radial deviators, and then I can pull this back up. You can do this one from a bunch of different positions. I can be here, sort of pulling down and coming back up, and if you wanna work the other one, you have to hold it backwards, and you're doing it kind of in this position, right? So we've got one exercise here, we've got one exercise here, and if you want, you can sort of just do it like this. This one is gonna be a little bit easier just cause there's less torque involved with the positioning. This one right here, you're basically under tension the entire time. Now for those two, the range of motion is, is incredibly short, but that's fine because the range of motion of your radial and ulnar deviation is actually really, relatively short anyways. So you can do those two with a club. You can kind of do the pronation supination with a dumbbell. The problem with that is the, the length of the dumbbell is usually not a lot, so you need a tremendous amount of load, so a really heavy dumbbell, in order to do that. It ends up turning into a biceps exercise, which oddly enough, or not oddly, conveniently enough, is really good for the peak, because your biceps brachii actually does supination. It's a powerful supinator when your elbow's at 90 degrees. So if you're not doing kettlebell stuff, you happen to have gotten this far in the video, and you want to develop a better peak, supination at 90 degrees is a great exercise for that. The last one that's really good um, that you don't need new equipment for is just gonna be sort of kettlebell spins or kettlebell twists. And you're gonna hold the bell and essentially you're going to use momentum to create resistance that you have to then use your pronators and supinators to overcome. It's pretty simple. You're just gonna sort of grab the bell. I'm typically doing this with the bell that I'm actually swinging with that day, sometimes one, occasionally two bells lighter. Again, the lighter the bell, then the higher the reps that you can do it for. But you're gonna grab the bell, again, as always, I'm making sure that we're not pinch gripping here, right, that's sort of like a, a cheater's grip. You wanna grab the bell with the fingers to make sure that you're also working your finger flexors. And essentially, you're just gonna be in this position right here and you can just twist the bell back and forth like this. Now, what's important is you are controlling the transition. It's easy to just turn and let the, the passive tissues of the forearm and the elbow stop it. So it's like, 
it's hitting this hard stop. You want to feel the bell accelerate and decelerate in a way that's not actually causing any trouble, or not trouble, but um, an abrupt resistance, right? So an abrupt one would look like this. You're just turning and just letting the tissues do this. You want to be actively involved where you're controlling, and you can see how it sort of, there's not this quick, you know, hard end feel there. We don't want to be loading the passive tissues just because we want, would like to avoid injury. And two, you want to use the muscles in that exercise so that they can get stronger so that when you're doing your Turkish get-ups, you actually have really, really good pronation and supination strength. So those are three, actually I probably went through eight or nine exercises there, but these are all exercises that are designed to improve your transverse and coronal plane strength and control of the wrist and the forearm. You may not think that it's very, very important, but if you start doing heavy Turkish get-ups, you're gonna find that, the, that there's a lot of actual strength, wrist strength, forearm strength that's necessary to control the kettlebell on both the sweep up and down, particularly the sweep down. So pay attention to that technical aspect, maybe throw these in. I usually do them after training. I'll, I'll throw them in with all the other grip stuff that I typically do um, to make sure that my elbow and my wrist are super, super strong that I, so that I can maintain really good control of those heavy bells when I'm doing a Turkish getup.